Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Gaming. So today, we're going to be taking a look at another Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, the Kin Gear Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now just to start out with, this is a $15 controller, and it's wireless, it has a rechargeable battery, it has motion controls, it has vibration, and it has a GameCube-style setup. And yes, you heard me right. I said $15. However, everything isn't perfect on this controller, so it's important you stay tuned to the review and we're going to look over a couple of those points. So let's start, as usual, with a close-up on the controller so we can see what it's working with. First of all, if we take a quick look at the box, it's very simple. Number one, the Kin Gear uh, labeling is actually a sticker that was added on after, which probably indicates that this is a Chinese-made product that's been simply rebranded as a Kin Gear product. However, uh, the presentation is very simple. It just says it's a pro controller for the Nintendo Switch. You have a quick view of the controller on the sides of it. And at the rear, you have a simple description of what you have in the box, which is the Pro Controller, a one meter charging cable, and the instruction manual with a quick indication of how you set it up for charging. So here's what we get in the box. As I indicated, you have the controller, you have the charging cable, and you have the instruction manual. Now we won't go through the instruction manual, any of this. It's very simple. It just shows you how to link up the Nintendo Switch, and it's in very many languages, I think over 10. First, if we start with the cable, Here's the first kicker, guys. It actually charges through USB-C, not micro USB. And although the cable that's included with it is very short, it's only three feet long, it is compatible with the charger for the Nintendo Switch or any other USB-C device you can have. Now, this is really surprising on a $15 controller since most third-party controllers don't even offer USB-C charging. Now, let's take a general overview of the controller. So the shape of the controller is very reminiscent of an Xbox One controller. However, it is a little bit smaller. When you're gonna be gripping it, your hands are gonna be going up a little further or higher up than they would on an Xbox One controller, which makes it a tiny bit less comfortable to my hands. But if you have smaller hands, you probably will actually appreciate that over a standard Xbox One controller. For the rest of the button configuration, well, no surprise, as you can see, it's set up for the A, B, X, Y buttons in the GameCube style. For the other buttons, what really is different is that the home button, rather than being next to the capture button here, it is much larger and in the center. After that, you have your capture, your minus, your plus, and this is a turbo functionality because not only does this have wireless uh, controller, not only does it have rumble, not only does it have motion control, it even has turbo functionality. The D-pad isn't stellar, but it's decent. I mean, it's responsive. However, if you're deep into 2D fighting games, I wouldn't recommend this as your main controller. You can get away with it, but there are better D-pads out on the market. And for the thumbsticks, they're decent. They're maybe a little tighter than I would have liked, but it's hard to complain at $15, and after fully breaking in the controller, it most likely will loosen up somewhat. Now, we're gonna get to the only major issue I have with this controller. By major issue, I mean it's not perfect for the rest, and we'll go over the regular review, but I think this is the best time to talk about it because we'll be able to get a proper view on what I'm talking about. The placement of the B button is very, very close to the thumbstick. What that means is that if I tilt it this way, you're gonna see every time you go to hit that B button, your thumb is brushing up against that thumbstick. Once you get used to it, you're not gonna trigger the thumbstick. So I was able after, I would say, an hour of play to sort of get used to it where I can hit the B button and not really trigger the, the thumbstick but you're always brushing up against it. It's just a pain in the neck. And it really gives you the impression that after this controller was put together, no one really play tested it before putting it out on the market. Because I can't see how if someone actually play tested this controller and used it, didn't notice that hitting the B button is always going to have your thumb brushing up against the thumbstick. 
And it's really just too bad because it would have been really easy to fix. You make this controller just about half an inch higher, giving you the space you need to move that B button up half an inch, and you would have a perfect GameCube setup on this controller. But because of this, well, unfortunately, it really sort of ruins the overall experience that you get with this controller because of that B button being so close to the thumbstick. However, I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker for everyone, because like I said, if you have smaller hands, you're going to be brushing up against that thumbstick a slightly less. And at the same time, for everything this controller is offering at the price, it's really hard to maybe not just get around it and get used to that, th that B button being so close to the thumbstick. As for the last set of buttons, which are the triggers, basically you have the standard clicky L and R buttons at the top, and you have mushy triggers for the ZL and ZR. I personally prefer clicky triggers on both the top and bottom buttons, but these mushy triggers don't have too long of a travel distance, meaning that I actually didn't hate them. So as usual for the last part of the close-up part of this review, we're gonna take a look at the button functionality for the turbo function. So basically how you activate it is very, very simple. You just hold down the button you want to have the turbo active on and then you press the turbo button. So for example, for now, even if I hold the B button down, I'm only getting one input. However, if I hold the B button down and I press turbo, from there on out, I'm getting multiple inputs when I hold the B button down. You can have it active on more than one button at a time. So if I add the A button to it, now I have it active on both the A and B button. And to cancel the turbo functionality on any of the buttons, you just repeat the reverse process. So for example, if I wanted to deactivate it from the B button, I just hold the B button down and I press turbo again. Now I'm only getting one input at a time again. So now that we have a better idea of what this controller is working with, we're going to get started on the actual review like I review all my controllers. Now if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos and you want more information on how I do my controller reviews, I actually have a specific video exactly explaining in details the process of reviewing a controller that I go through. However, for most of you, you're probably going to get everything you need from just watching the review today, but if you want to, that video is on my channel. But for most of you out there, you're probably going to get everything you need in the review today. I would like to also mention that I'm not sponsored in any way for this video. I bought this controller myself on Amazon and I'll be leaving an affiliate link down below. So if any of you do decide to pick up this controller, please use the link. It'll help the channel out a little bit. And while you're at it, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you aren't already to the channel. But now let's get on with the review. Now, as usual for all my reviews, the first section we're going to look at is the general feel and build quality of the controller, which is a score out of five. And unfortunately, this is one of the sections that is going to hurt this controller because I can only give it a one out of five. Why? Well, the build quality isn't awful, but it is a build quality like those cheap Chinese controllers. If you press hard on the controller, there is a little bit of give to it. And overall, it, you can tell it's not a first party controller. And secondly, because we're talking about feel of the controller and that my main gripe with this controller for all the awesome features it's giving you for such a low price is the feel of that B button, I have to deduct it an extra point there. Normally, had it not been for that misplaced B button, I could have given this controller a two or a three out of five. But really, because of that button, I have to deduct a point here because I just wouldn't be fair to all the other controllers that have better setups. Next, we're going to move on to the features and aesthetics. And in this category, this controller is actually going to catch up quite a bit because it's going to be getting a very solid 7 out of 10. Why 7 out of 10? Well, all the features are there you're looking for a controller. Rechargeable battery, wireless, vibration, motion control. Basically, the only special function it doesn't have is NFC. It will not read Amiibos. But I can't say it enough for $15, having all those features there, plus charging through USB-C and not micro USB is just amazing. And overall, 
I'm not going to give it any extra points on the aesthetics just because it's just very plain aesthetic wise. Now we really get to that most important part of the review, the actual gameplay scores. Now first we always look at 3D action and FPS games. Now in this category, this controller is going to be getting a solid 7 out of 10. Once again, all the features are there that you want. The fact that you don't have NFC really doesn't impact you most of the time in this type of gameplay. The motion controls actually respond very well. The only thing, like I said, the only reason I can't maybe score it higher is once again the placement of that B button. Sometimes when you're really deep in the action, it will get on your nerves having your thumb always brush up against that thumbstick and when you're getting used to using the controller at the beginning it could even give you some false inputs hitting that thumbstick rather than hitting the b button next we're going to move on to our second category which are traditional side scrollers or traditional 2d platformers and in this category this controller is going to be getting another solid 7 out of 10. why 7 out of 10? Well, the D-pad is a solid offering. It's not stellar, but it's solid. If you're doing directional inputs like 2D platformers and side scrollers need, you're gonna be satisfied with this D-pad, although it's not the best available on the market. At the same time, however, as in the other categories, I really can't put it any higher because once again of that darn B button. And now third on our list, we have our 2D fighters. So we're talking about our Dragon Ball Fighter Z's, our Mortal Kombat's, all those traditional fighters. And unfortunately, in this category, this controller is actually gonna be getting one of its lowest scores, which is a six out of 10. Why a six out of 10? Well, as I said in the previous category, this isn't the best D-pad. And when you're looking for gaming in this category, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a really solid, a really good D-pad. And like I said earlier, it's really good for single direction inputs. However, when you get into those rotation inputs, this D-pad sometimes will miss the mark, unfortunately. And once again, this is probably the category where it's most frustrating to hit that thumbstick rather than that B button, and you're really gonna be screaming at the screen when you basically miss an input. Now, last but definitely not least in our gaming categories, we have our racing games, like Mario Kart, Crash Team Racing, and whatnot. Now for me, this is gonna be this controller's highest scoring category, netting it a really solid eight out of 10. Why? Because this is the category where that B button is actually not gonna get on your nerves so much. If you set the gas to A and you basically move the buttons around where you don't need to use that B button on too much of a regular basis, you're actually gonna love this controller. The motion controls actually work really well. I was able to play through all the stages of Mario Kart that I tested with this controller. No problem on full motion control, which really actually surprised me because some higher priced third party controllers don't actually give you that level of control. So overall, where does this leave us with this controller? Well, it leaves us with an overall score of 36 out of 55. Now I know what you're thinking, it's not incredible. However, I can't say it enough, this is a $15 controller. We're in the same situation as when we reviewed the PDP Rock Candy controller. I mean, for the price you're paying for this thing, you shouldn't be expecting it to hit a 50 out of 55. I mean, it just wouldn't make sense if it beat out an official Nintendo Switch Pro controller for $15. But I think that the package it's offering for the price it's offering is actually really solid. And its only major downside is the placement of that B button. And it really is too bad. Because honestly, it could have easily scored an extra three to five points almost, making it actually a incredibly solid overall controller if only that B button was a half an inch higher. I mean, it's just incredible, like I said, that you get the impression that once this controller was produced, that no one basically play tested it before they decided to mass produce it. And overall, it just became its only major really big disappointment point. And once again, 
I was actually surprised by this controller. Same thing as the PDP. When I bought a $15 controller, especially a wireless rechargeable controller, I was amazed by what I got. I was expecting this thing to be like, I'm sorry to say it, but I was expecting it to be trash. And overall, USB-C charging, motion controls that work well, rumble that is actually pretty decent, it's not haptic feedback, but it's it's generally good rumble. And overall, a construction that although isn't top notch was decent. Anyway, I think I've brought my point home enough. If you're looking for a cheap alternative that you probably won't be disappointed with as long as you're aware of that B button placement and that you can actually deal with something like that, I mean, the Kin Gear Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is a controller that you should be looking out for, especially if you appreciate that GameCube placement. And by the way, as a bonus, because I forgot to mention it everywhere else in the review, this controller is actually PC compatible. Now, you won't need any type of adapters, you can connect it directly to your PC. So if you're looking for that controller for GameCube emulators on your PC, well, you just got my number one budget choice right here. So that's pretty much it for my review. Now, as I said earlier, don't forget that the affiliate links are down below. So if you're looking to pick up the controller, please use that link. At the same time, before you go, if you appreciated the video, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps a lot with the visibility on YouTube. Subscribe if you aren't already, as I said earlier, once again. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.